it, it's the common thing that people laugh at that they get probed but i've i've heard other stories where they have been um sexually abused by these things yeah it's like it, it opens a doorway to them because it's not supposed to happen to a, a you know a child Welcome back to Strange Normal. My name is Brad Burnham, and we talk about the strange things that happen in your normal life to give you a biblical understanding of the world that you live in. And tonight, we have an amazing story from Corey, Corey Pressler. He has quite the experience. But before we get into that story, if you're interested in these topics, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell too, so that you're notified when these strange events start to happen because they're about to, things are about to break in this world that no one has ever seen before. And if you feel this is an important topic, please contribute using the donation links in the description below. Now let's get started. Thanks for coming on the show tonight, Corey. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Thanks for having me on. Um, my name's Corey Pressler and I'm from uh, Huntington, Indiana. I've uh, known about Jesus real early on in my life because my mother, she was a uh, she was born in Kentucky and uh, Christianity is really, really heavy down in the South. If you're from America and you know anything about the South, I mean, it's, it's pretty uh, Baptist driven. And uh, so she raised myself and my sister pretty heavy on taking us to uh, church as far back as I can remember. And uh, yeah, Real early on in my life, I, I had some uh, sexual abuse that happened that triggered an out-of-body experience. Oh, wow. And I had a lot of events after that. It was like it opened a doorway, so to speak. And I would go to sleep and I would have these events over and over and over. And But once I had the, I had spinal meningitis when I was 11. And once I had that, it, it stopped the uh, out-of-body experiences altogether. And so these events, these events that you were talking about, they are, um, they, they're the OBE, I think that is what they call them, right? The out-of-body experience that, uh, or are you talking about something more spiritual? Yes, exactly. Yes, they, they were OBEs, out-of-body experiences. And some of them, I would just shoot straight up through the roof, through the ceiling, through the roof up into the night sky and then shoot straight back down into my body and then wake right up. I had memories of that. And then I had memories of almost like I had a skateboard underneath me and I could, I was only inches from the ground and I could scoop my hands and I could feel the texture of the asphalt. That's the one thing I remember. And I was like scraping my nails on the streets and, but then I could shoot straight up into the air just thinking about it. And wow. it was, I mean, it was really amazing, actually. I could see where people could, like, get addicted to that. But, yeah, once I had the spinal meningitis, looking back, I used to regret ever it happening to me because of it gave me a lot of learning disabilities and it affected the way I approached school and everything. I used to be able to be uh, a clarinet player. I could play clarinet. And once I had the meningitis, it was like somebody had it up on a chalkboard and just swiped it clean. Like I couldn't read music anymore. I couldn't, there's all kinds of stuff. I chunks of my uh, childhood, I couldn't remember. And mm. yeah, but now looking back, I, I look at it as Jesus was saving me from those OBEs. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it's uh, demonic and it's not supposed to happen unless the Lord is making it happen. Do you, I, I got a question about that. Cause I don't know a lot about OBEs. Um, but is that related to remote viewing? I know there's often been papers that have come out in the government recently. That's talking about how they've been experimenting with remote viewing where supposedly they use some kind of um, spiritualism 
to look in places that they're not. Yeah. At. It's a astral projection. I think is what you're looking for mm. is what they are doing. Astral projection. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if um, these astral project- projections, which that's a new term for me, I, I got to look into now, but it's um, if they aren't actually, um, visions basically of what we're seeing through a demonic eye in other words um what what we see from a uh that is being placed in our brain from another memory from something else and uh i i I don't think we're ever going to fully understand exactly what's going on until we get to heaven but um I've, i've heard about this stuff quite a bit and it makes me wonder exactly what's going on yeah i think that's what's happening when people are uh quote unquote, being alien abducted. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's a form of hypnotism. And plus these are, you got to understand these are fallen angels. Mm-hmm. So their natural created ability when they were good was to go to the prophets and give them visions. And they mm-hmm. would see, you know, complete accurate visions of whatever God wanted to uh, relate to them. Mm-hmm. And so imagine that, but now you're evil. So they can basically make you see and feel and do whatever they want, especially if they have control, if you've accepted them and invited them in somehow. And, and that, that's actually a really good point um, you bring up. And I want to um, ask you this. Uh, have there, did you ever, ever have any drugs involved? And the only reason I asked that primarily because um, – Oftentimes, I found that when we take drugs, they inhibit the frontal lobe of our brain, making us unable to say no to things. Uh, just naturally, something as as uh, what we seem innocuous as alcohol can cause us to slowly cause our, our reactions to be slower and cause us to be uh, uninhibited, maybe even uninhibited spiritually. And so, um, did was that any any part of your life at that time? Uh, no, this was when I was uh, young. This mm-hmm. was when I was from age of six all the way to about 11. Okay. But I did, after, right after that, I, I got real heavy because when I had the recall, the the sexual trauma and all that came with it, mm-hmm. along with the, the memories of the OBs. And so I was covering it up with drugs and alcohol. Mm-hmm. And that went on for about 20 plus years. I'm on my seventh year of sobriety. Wow. I'm still going through a, a clinic that's helping me through this plus Jesus. Mm-hmm. But I was real heavy into the ancient alien theory mm-hmm. while I was using and uh, abusing drugs. And I totally believe that we were planted here from aliens and it replaced God. I mean, completely. That's the whole purpose of it. And um, I was engaged to a girl. We had just moved into a place. And the first night we were there, we were sleeping on the floor because the bed hasn't been moved in yet. We were still getting everything moved in. And I uh, was struggling. I, I woke her up and she woke up to me struggling. I couldn't move. I was in sleep paralysis and I had pressure on my shoulders. And she got up and tried to lift me and said that I was I, she couldn't get me up that I was like a thousand pounds couldn't move me. And then we both heard giggling. Like we couldn't see anything, but you could hear where a head should be right there. And like its knees were on my shoulders and it was giggling. And she, we both heard it because we looked at each other immediately. And eventually it just kind of faded away. The pressure kind of went away. The paralysis kind of went away, but, We both heard that. I mean, there was no denying it. But like after that, like the next couple of days, we didn't talk about it. But she just wanted to act like it didn't happen. But I knew exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like a week after that, maybe two weeks, I started a job at a dairy dispensary distribution place. And 
one night I went out this side door where I was working and I would go out there to have cigarettes and I saw my boss and I was trying to talk to him and he's looking up in the sky and I happened to look up where he was looking and I saw four orbs and they were moving real slow and I thought they were all separate, separate uh, craft. And then four turned into eight, eight turned into 16. And then this thing just was like the size of about three to four football fields huh. right in front of me. It was the shape of a triangle, but the bottom of it was rounded off. And then about a year later, I think, maybe two, I was watching sightings on sci-fi and I saw the Phoenix lights. Mm -hmm. And that was exactly what I'd seen. It was the first time I'd ever seen or heard about the Phoenix lights. And it was exactly what I'd seen. But when it happened, there was no, uh, there was no wind. There was no sound. Um, it, it looked like it was like floating underwater and it had made a 180 turn and kind of floated off to this other set of woods because it was real low. It was only treetop height, maybe two and a half houses high, like a single story house. Um, and then it just floated off real slow. How old were you at the time? That was uh, 99, 2000. So who... 20, 20, 22, 22. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was like 99 or 2000. How did these, I'm trying to figure out how, how, do, how does all this come together? How does, how do these um, all, all combine to your testimony about Christ? With a lot of my research, uh, People that I, I've, uh, or how should I say this? Those that, that have come forward with their testimony about sexual abuse and usually like alien abduction, either that's happened in their life, some type of sexual abuse, because it attracts them somehow, some way that, I mean, because it's wrong. Mm. There's nothing right about it. And it's like one of them sins that is just extra. It's got that extra oomph behind yeah. it. You know what I mean? And it seems to attract them, the demonic. Hmm. And, uh, and then anybody that I've seen that's had uh, sleep paralysis, that's another thing, is either going to have an a, like a UFO sighting or they'll have the sighting and then the sleep paralysis yeah you know one or the other i've heard that that's a precursor i think to it. a lot there's probably a there's probably a lot of people that don't want to come forward because there is sexual abuse that's mm -hmm. involved and that's totally understandable but i've i've come to the point in my life to where i'd rather not hide it like it's some dirty secret but expose it yeah and especially for what it is and if it's associated and connected to this in any way then i definitely need to let people know and maybe it'll give somebody else the courage to do the same you know it, it's interesting that you bring up uh, sexual abuse because i've i've discovered and maybe this is somehow related somehow maybe someone in the comments can uh shed some more light on this but there's i actually considered doing a video on abductions and, and sexuality because it seems like there's a lot of people doing these abduct or there's there's been a lot of people experiencing these, these abductions and during the abduction um phase they get sexually molested not only are they being you know you, you it's, it's the common thing that people laugh at that they get probed but or or some operation on them or some some uh, and, and this isn't something to laugh at but you know something uh, even impregnates them but i've i've heard other stories where they have been um sexually abused by these things and it's 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 a it's a very strange thing that that's ha that happens and i wonder if um 
if it's initiated by sexual abuse that's already happened in the person's life and, and the, these demonic entities bring to mind those memories during this, this uh, time that they are, are making this individual experience these things. I'm, I'm just playing with ideas in my head. This is all speculative. I have nothing to prove this, but uh, it's, it's an interesting thought. Yeah, it's like it, it opens a doorway to them because it's not supposed to happen to a, a you know a child. That's an experience that is way off in years. And then yes, you're you're completely correct. I mean, uh, Carla Turner, she's a, a good example. She's passed away now, but her whole family was being abducted, hmm. and they were all being sexually assaulted. Hmm. I mean, from mother and father all the way down to the, the children mm. and yeah it, it's just no holds barred and for these people to go around and i don't want to name names but there's they're saying that there's no evidence that these entities are here to harm us when that's <sighs> all there is is evidence that they came here and harm people a hundred percent I can't yeah. even think of the word now. The, yeah, it, the, it, the, the jury's out the on, device. on why this is happening for sure. But the absolute truth is that these things are, it, it, uh, <laughs> these, these demonic entities are, are trying to portray themselves as the good guy. Well, we see the evidence. I, I guess the Bible calls it the fruits. You will know them by their fruits. And uh, the fruits of these things are, you know, they've, yes. they've, according to official documents from the government, they've burned victims. I mean, they've given them three uh, level three burns. What is that called? Um, I have a nurse in the room. Uh, third degree. Third degree burns. Yeah, she's shaking her head. Yes. Um, third degree burns. Uh, they've, uh, they've given them radiation poisoning. They've, they've altered the brain so that it doesn't function as well as it used to. I mean, th- these, this isn't some... Uh, grandma in the basement has seen some lights and they, they've said that there has been medical emergencies because of these things. Pilots have died after going after these things. Ships have had their, their ammunition ricocheted back from these things and destroyed. I mean, all this is coming out into the news and, and right now. And, and, and people are still saying these things are benevolent. It, it just blows my mind. Anyway, off my, my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, even uh, L.A. Marzulli just had a video about, I can't remember who it was that just released, uh, talking about women that are getting pregnant when mm-hmm. they're not having sex with anybody, and but they remember being abducted. Mm-hmm. And they, and or they're getting pregnant and then the baby just disappears. But right. The, the sack, the embryonic sack that goes around it is supposed to like if you i guess if it's a miscarriage the whole sack and everything's supposed to go but the sack is being left behind so so i'm very I'm this 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 confuses me a lot actually yeah, they, they, because um i i haven't I, 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 uh, to date and this might change maybe someone in the comments might be able to correct me on this but i haven't found any official record of someone saying i have been pregnant and i've had it delivered <laughs> there might be someone, someone that eventually says that, but it hasn't been officially uh, confirmed. Right, right. But, but there, there is, there is instances where I believe, and I think this is what's happening. I'm not sure that um, perhaps demonic entities can can make the brain believe that it's pregnant. And like uh, we had a, a lady on, a wonderful, nice lady named Lee, just last last time. She she talked about how uh, she was pregnant and the sack was empty. And so that tells me that the body thought she was pregnant and it went ahead and, yeah. and uh, started this process, but there wasn't anything there. And so that makes me, makes me, makes me think yeah. the brain's pretty powerful and that uh, perhaps these entities are causing this to happen. Anyway, I'm talking way too much. This is about your testimony, not, not mine, but it's, it's a fascinating thing to think about, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's uh, like when you're under hypnosis, they can, tell you that there's a cat in the room and the cat has scratched you and the mind will create the scratch. And even uh, people that get, that have been affected by alien abduction will go to a hypnotist. Memory regression. Yeah. Memory regression. I've heard of that too. 
it'll activate an abduction right there. It'll yeah. activate whatever it'll bring in the entities. Exactly. That's, that's exactly what it is. Hypno- hypnosis is, is nothing to be played with because it's, it's, it's allowing these entities to go in and, and manipulate your mind and then they can put in there whatever they want. And you could think, Oh yeah, well, that's what, that's exactly what happened. And that's, that's what happened to me in such and such a date. I've even heard people talk about how, Oh, well in a past life, according to my memory regression, I was, uh, a, a butterfly or something like that. And we know that's not true. And so it's, it's, it's obvious to me that these, these entities are playing using using this, this hypnotism to play with people's minds and make them think that they are what they, what they aren't. That's why we can't play with that stuff. Yes. Yeah. It's very dangerous. It's a slippery slope and you're, you're opening yourself it's no different than playing with the ouija board right you don't know what you're going to get right mm. you have no idea so how did you find christ and all but, this? Uh, yeah after i had that sighting i uh i really really dug in with the ancient alien but it also it led me down a road to uh look at every avenue And that took me down the avenue of the documentary called Age of Deceit, Hmm. which had a whole plethora of information from Gan Shamira, Hmm. the face like the sun. And uh, I had seen where there was a story of a guy that had cried out to Jesus Christ and ended his attack. And that just triggered a light in my head immediately. And then I went to the website that the testimony had come from. And I saw there was just hundreds and hundreds of testimony of others. And wow, we just, it affected me so much that all my uh, experience with Jesus Christ before and what I was seeing there at that time, uh, it just opened up the floodgates I accepted Jesus right there on the spot. I dropped to my knees, asked for forgiveness. I mean, it wasn't because I was being attacked and I cried out to Jesus and it felt, you know, that's not where my testimony is coming from. It's because of others' testimonies that brought me back to Jesus Hmm. because I had backslid, you know, so many times when I was younger growing up because of drugs and alcohol and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm just you know life and but yeah those testimonies i mean i I thank god every day wow so you started claiming the name of jesus christ and these things uh stopped did it stop immediately or did it did you take some time for this to to uh yeah i mean i didn't have any there was no sleep paralysis after that there was no uh no more ufo sightings no no paranormal anything Wow. Uh, just just uh, a lot of the uh, uh, drugs, wanting me to use drugs, that was really being attacked on me. But mm-hmm. I, I pulled away completely from that. And like I said, I haven't used in seven years. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, it's, it's a powerful thing. I, that was three years ago that, yeah, that was three years ago that I gave myself to uh, – Jesus. Hmm. Hmm. So how long ago was your last experience with this, I guess, is the word. The, with the supernatural, mm-hmm. that would have been the uh, UFO, that UFO sighting. Is there anything else you want to share that you feel impressed to share about? Um, yeah. If, if anybody needs somebody to talk to i'm there for anyone i i mean i'll help anyone that needs the help all they have to do is just give me an email or get a hold of me on my my uh youtube channel what is your youtube channel it's alien demonic deception 24 perfect 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 yeah i'll i'll put a link to it in the bottom of that um uh, in the, in the, in the link section, I'll pin it to the top so that people, people can find you and, and in the description too. 
Do you do okay. um, any testimony videos on there or what do you do with your, your, with your channel? Can you talk a little bit about that? I, uh, I re upload anything that has to do with the, the UFO alien demonic deception mm -hmm. and testimonies. Uh, I'm good friends with Lee Arn, Arne, mm -hmm. the lady that you were talking about earlier. Oh yeah. Um, very good. I've got a bunch of her stuff on there. Um, we used to be a part of the CE4 research team with Joseph Jordan. Very good. Uh, I've got a lot of his stuff on there. Just the, the things that, the Bible tells us and what our senses mm -hmm. are telling mm -hmm. us how it lines up perfect. And a lot of what uh, science is trying to tell us is not really lining up. If mm. you actually, if you actually do the, uh, the research and the experiments, I guess. Mm. Well, very good, man. I'm, I'm so glad that uh, you, you got away from this, this, this demonic deception. I mean, it's, it's a, there's so many people caught up in this. I would even call it a religion of this um, demonic uh, alien UFO science. I think they call it pseudoscience that, that um, they're absolutely sure that they want to believe in something, but they don't want to know what, what it is that they want to believe in. They want to believe in, in something greater than them, but do, that doesn't have any moral authority over them. And I think that's what the, the essence of this deception is, is that um, we, we, uh, we're human. <laughs> we want to do what we want to do and we don't want to be yeah. responsible for it. Yeah. I think a lot of it is some people just don't want to hold themselves accountable to their sins mm -hmm. and they know it. And a lot of it is science fiction movies. Mm -hmm. And I know I was a science fiction enthusiast growing up and now I can't stand it. I can't watch any of it. And I used to love horror films and mm -hmm. the Holy spirit is just like, Nope, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. It just, there's no way all the stuff that I used to really love is I've turned away from it. Like a lot of it was earthly and mm -hmm. just doesn't fit. But uh, yeah, science fiction, it really makes you want to have another planet out there that you can just run to or, yeah, you know, but yeah, it's yeah, not the way it is. Exactly. That's, that's what Hollywood does too. It's, it's the classic question is, is art mimicking life or is life mimicking art? And I think right. oftentimes we have that uh, life mimics art far more than art mimics life. So it's really interesting to see what's happening. Definitely. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and, and telling us what incredible experiences that you've had uh, at overcoming this, this demonic experience and that how others can do it too, because that's super important. And uh, we'll definitely be checking out your YouTube channel and uh, reaching out to you if, if uh, anybody has any trouble. Definitely. Thank you very much.